Hey guys, doing a quick video for you. Get to say hi to Artie. I don't, I'm not able to use my flash, the camera's being weird, so you're not going to be able to see anything too great. Um, just because, you know, the focus gets weird with lighting and with the lighting in the cage and all that kind of stuff. But you haven't been able to see her in a while, so I thought I'd do a, a video where you get to see her. But this video, if you know, if you can read, you saw the title, it's going to be about uh, how to make your own cheap skimmer, like water surface skimmer. All right. So when I first set up this canister filter in this stock tank for her, there's also a turtle. If you didn't know what that was, that's a turtle dock. When I first set this up, I had to clean the filter pads almost every single day. And that was a, a massive pain. It was a pain to do. It was a pain to come home and hear the thing stuffed up. Because, you know, harsh reality is she gets in her water, she gets out, she's dirty. And then she goes back in. Now all that dirt's in there. And the filter does a wonderful job, and it kept the water crystal clear, but it would suck all that up. And after she does that five times, it stopped up. And so, I was looking into buying a skimmer, and then I sat there and I was like, wait, I can probably do this myself, huh? And so I ended up doing this right here. I'm actually not going to be able to pull it out and show it to you guys, so I do regret not showing you the process of me building it, but I'll be able to explain it very, very easily. I don't want to pull it out because it's positioned in just the right spot and it's weighted down perfectly so it doesn't move and she can't move it. I work at a movie theater and so I just got one of these old reusable popcorn tubs that they sell there. <laughs> um, it was new, it just wasn't the current one we were using so it's not you know dirty or anything. And so there's a little like 250 gallon per hour, um, I just lost the word, oh pond pump. And you can use a power head, it would work like 10 times better, or you could use a pump that's more made for vivariums, that type of stuff. It would work a lot better, just because it has, um, the input and the output are the same. If you, if you know what I'm talking about with these pumps, your input is not going to, your input will not look like this, your output will. It'll just be a little black piece of tubing sticking out of the side, and it blows water out through there. You can kind of see the stream moving. I'm actually going to go ahead and go grab a flashlight, because like I no, oh, no, I tried recording this video earlier, it didn't work. My flash isn't working on this camera, so I'm going to go grab a flashlight so I can show you a little bit better. Alright guys, well, I cannot actually find a flashlight that is not dead. Out of all of them, they're all dead, so now there's a whole bunch of charging flashlights. So, do expect a video on how to make one of these later in the day. I will just kind of tell you about it right now, but I'll go more into depth. And I guess I'll pull it out of the water and I'll actually show it to you. But for right now, I guess I'll just show you how it works. And this is going to go back to being more of an update again. And less of a how-to like I wanted it to be. I should have planned this in advance. Alright, but anyway, what we're, what we're working with here is, like I said, like a 200-ish gallon per hour pump. And this thing does about like 200 as well, like my canister filter. I think, or like 180 or something. And so, you know, I've got so much water flow in here. It's perfect. The water is always kind of tinted because I do use cypress mulch as bedding mixed in with my soil. It helps hold humidity like crazy, but it does leave a tint. It leaves a tint on my lizard, leaves a tint in my water. Kind of just something I have to deal with, and I don't want to use any chemicals in my water to treat that like I could with a pond. You can actually see the turtle, like right down there. You can never see her before in my videos, so that's awesome. It normally looks a lot better than this, but like I said before, the filter had been off for a while, and her getting in and out does its thing. So essentially how this works is it sucks water in through here, you know, obviously blows it out there. And what I've got right here, hopefully you guys can hear me, I'm sorry if it's a little loud in here. What I've got right here is just some stuff that's now all over the, the water because I dropped it. Right, that's what I used to clean it too. Right here is just some white polyester, I think. It's probably not called polyester, it's the stuff they used to fill pillows. It's 100% natural, no chemicals, nothing. People use this for filter padding all the time. But I've also got some ceramic ceramic rings in there, and that helps um, create beneficial bacteria. So essentially, as you can see, water is running in through all these holes. I want to stick that in there. goes like that. Now let's go ahead and grab you know, some chunks of bark for you. I'm 
struggling to find pieces that I'm okay with putting in there right now. <laughs> Alright. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to put them right here. You know, little pieces are getting sucked away first, but there is a very strong current in this tank. And I'm sorry the lighting isn't too great. But as you can see, you know, even from all the way over there, I have no worry. Like, even though that just blew all the way across the tank, I have no worries that everything is going to get picked up. Alright, so that's how that works. It just sucks things in, pretty much. It's just a little inverted filter, and it actually does wonders. It does so much more than just pick up that surface bark. It'll also pick up a lot of the dirt before the canister has to. And since that's so easy to clean, I just pull it out, wring it out, bring it right to my bathroom, rinse the thing out, and I'm, I'm good to go. Alright, so... I'm more... I'm perfectly fine with cleaning that little pad out four or five times a day, because it takes two seconds, where I'm... I don't have to clean that thing out, but, like, once a week. I haven't cleaned this thing in over a week, and it's working perfectly, because this thing does most of the work, believe it or not. It doesn't have a ton of filter media, but the amount of water that passes through this thing every second is probably a lot higher than this. And with it being right at the surface, it catches things before they have a chance to hit the ground. I do have to feed the turtle over there, because that's where the water is the stillest, to give her a good opportunity to feed, or else it'll all get sucked into here. But everything is actually working great. Here's another little shot of Artie for you. Now, I do have more plans for this. Um, I don't know if I'm going to add fish, just because they won't benefit me at all. Um, the turtle actually doesn't like going after live fish, and neither does Artie. She won't touch a live fish. It's weird. She loves fish. That's what she eats most of the day. <laughs> but she won't touch a live fish. Now, sorry about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some freshwater clams and a little box of sand, and I'm going to add some mystery snails. And so I'm going to have mystery snails breeding in here. Normally you have to have a separate breeding box to keep that humidity high, but the humidity is ridiculously high in here, as you can imagine, with this big of an open body of water and this much heat. So they'll be able to hatch right into the tank. I will also have, um, you know, the snails and the clams. And if you don't know what freshwater clams do, they're 100% filter feeders. They'll eat all kinds of decaying biological matter and, you know, fresh biological matter through... A little siphon in their mouth and the snails will add a little bit more to the bio load waste wise but the clams will pick up what they don't what okay let me rephrase that the clams will consume the waste from the snails there we go and you know turtles they poop a lot water monitors when they have this much water they love to poop in the water so you can imagine the amount of poop I get in this water I go through every now and then when I see it with a fishnet and I pick up poop just because, you know, it's gross to leave it in there and it's gross knowing it's in my filters. But besides that, you know, I've done water tests on here. Everything looks good. It's just that little bit of tint and there is a little bit of dirt that kind of just floats around in there. Which also makes me apprehensive about getting fish. Just because I don't want them to have irritated gills for their entire lives. This is a longer video than I've done in a long time, guys, but... I thought you guys might appreciate it. Like I said, I wanted to do a, a DIY video. Expect that later on. But for now, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.